look at the side of the truck, it's kind of like a cheat code. You know, crash damage and leak, you'll remember to say it. All right? But, like I say, at the very beginning, you start at the front end of your trailer. 45 minutes, it should take about 20, 25 at the most, once you get fluid with the information. All right, so as you go over it, you'll say to the tester, as I approach the front end of my vehicle, I'm gonna make sure it's not leaning to the left and right side, which will indicate a suspension issue and or flat tire. Also wanna check up top where my clearance lights are, check down low where my headlights and signal lights, down on the side of my vehicle, my side marking lights, to make sure that they all are proper color, they're properly secure, not missing that zip off, not cracked or damaged. Now you don't have to say leak on parts that don't leak. Um, if you want, you can say it on them, depending on where you're going, certain NBAs don't want to hear it, and certain will allow you to say leaks on everything. You know, but if you can, try to focus on things that do actually leak, like anything with air or anything with fluid, and then add the leaks to the end of cracked or damaged uh, for those parts. But other than that, you check underneath the engine compartment, make sure there's no hanging wires or no puddles. Make sure there's no engine uh, fluid, uh, such as transmission or engine oil. Now, once you do that, that completes the front end of the vehicle. We then pop the hood and start on the driver's side of the engine. You can pop that side on the engine. Appreciate it, boss. Thank you. All right. Now, from this point on, if you want to record, feel free to record. You can get a personal video, uh, video that way you can zoom in on some of the parts that I point out uh, for those who want to record. It's totally fine. All right. All right, so when you get to the engine part of the uh, the compartment, you want to name all hoses and wires. Me personally, I'll just say all hoses and wires on this side of my engine are securely mounted. I'm missing that supposed to not crack, damage, or leaking. And being that the hoses are rubber, they're not dry rod or frayed, and the electrical wires are rubber as well, so they're not melted or frayed. Because electricity, of course, get hot, they can't melt some of, some of the uh, wire casing around it. Um, if there's a short in any of the wires, all right? So make sure the wires and rubber hoses are not dry rod, melted, or frayed, all right? So that will cover all hoses and wires on this side of my engine, all right? From that point on, I'll go to my steering gearbox. The steering gearbox, securely mounted, not missing nuts and bolts, not cracked, damaged, or leaking, because there is fluid inside the steering gearbox. I also have my connecting arms, also known as a pitman arm, uh, tie rods or connecting arms and rods and also castle nuts and carter keys on both ends all right and they're both all parts excuse me are securely mounted not missing nuts or bolts not cracked or damaged from there we go up to our coolant reservoir we check the coolant reservoir through the sight glass now in between the sight glass it should read between add and full if we happen to need to add any fluid to any of the reservoirs that hold fluid you always want to wait till the engine cools off before adding any fluid all right, and also you make sure that that reservoir is securely mounted, not missing nuts or bolts, not crack, damage, or leaking fluid. All right, from there you go to your power steering fluid. Uh, we check that by pulling out the dipstick here. We'll wipe it clean, reinsert it, pull it back out, should read between and full. Same exact thing with the oil dipstick, pull it out, wipe it clean, reinsert it, pull it back out. It should once again read between and full. Um, now, technically, on the day of your touch, you do not have to touch any part out here. You just point to it and explain to it what you would check, all right? So from there, we go back to the power steering uh, fluid. We drop down to the power steering fluid hose. Now, this hose is going to lead to my first gear-driven part on this side of the engine, which will be at my gear-driven power steering pump. That should be securely mounted, not missing nuts or bolts, not cracked or damaged. You just tell them you follow this hose and it drops down below the frame. You cannot technically see the power steering pump because it is uh, further down underneath the frame, but it is there. You just let them know you follow that hose down to it. They know exactly what you're talking about. And from there, we go to our second and final gear driven part, which would be the gear driven air compressor and air lines. If you want to zoom in, get a better look, you see exactly where that hose is going. There you go, the air compressor and air lines. All right, those two parts securely mounted, not missing us or bolts, not crack damage or leaking air. All right. And from there, that concludes it. This side of the engine, we walk around to the other side. And on this side, it's just a few parts that we gotta check. Once again, we'll say all hoses and all wires on this side of the engine. All right, securely mounted, not missing us or bolts, not cracked, damaged, or leaking. Also, not dry rod melted or frayed, so that covers all hoses and connecting wires on this side. All right, so from there, we only have three parts to go over. We got the belt-driven alternator. All right, must say that it is a belt-driven alternator. 
It is ran by the belt, the serpentine belt here. That belt should not have more than three quarter inch of play in that belt if you was to push or tug onto that uh, belt. It should also not be ripped or torn, dry rod afraid. It should be securely mounted, all right? And from there, that alternator also securely mounted, not missing nuts or bolts, not cracked or damaged. And you know which one is the alternator that has the red and white wires connected to it, all right? Yeah. And from there, it drops down to our second and final belt-driven part, which would be the belt-driven water pump. Can right, that sits below the frame. Oh, okay. You technically don't have to really get up on it. You can actually stand back and just point down in that direction. They know what you're talking about. It's your belt-driven water pump, which should be securely mounted, not missing us or bolts, not cracked, damage, or leaking in. From there, you go down to your suspension parts. We have four suspension parts that we must go over. First will be the front hanger mount. There's your front hanger mount. Second is the rear hanger mounts, which sits actually behind the plastic frame, so you can't see it, but it's back there. Front and rear hanger mount. Then also you have your leaf spring. The leaf spring should not be shifted and or missing. You have your U-bolts, which are shaped like an upside down U. Two U-bolts here, all right? And then you have your top and bottom shock absorber. Those four parts, front and rear hangers, leaf spring, U-bolts, and shock absorber. All parts securely mounted, not missing nuts or bolts, not cracked, damage, and shock absorber not leaking. Also, from there you go to your five brake parts. Five brake parts, brake holes. All right, brake holes connect to the brake chamber. All right, that brake chamber and brake holes, both parts securely mounted, not missing nuts or bolts, not cracked, damage, and or leaking. All right, from there we go to our slack adjuster push rod. All right, the slack adjuster push rod here. All right, the slack adjuster comes out, drops down at a 90 degree angle. The push rod should not move more than one inch with the brakes release and the wheels chalk, all right? They may ask you, which part sets at a 90 degree? You say the slack adjuster. Which part doesn't move more than one inch with the brakes release and the wheels chalk? You let them know the push rod, all right? From that point on, they're securely mounted, not missing us with bolts, not cracked or damaged. We go to our brake drum. The brake drum should be free of contaminants such as oil or grease. The reason we say that is because we have a hub oil seal here. If that was to have a crack on the outside or inside, it can leak on either in or outside of the brake drum, causing you to lose brake power. So you always want to make sure that you are free of contaminant on your brake drum such as oil or grease to make sure you have full brake uh, power. All right, And that should be securely mounted, not missing nuts or bolts, not cracked or damaged and on the inside of the brake drum, which will be your brake lining. So the day you test, the wheel will probably be straight. I had it turned this way so you guys can see all the brake parts, but the brake lining are basically like the brake pads, all right? And they sit on the inside of the brake drum and those you wanna make sure they're not worn dangerously thin. They are the proper thickness, securely mounted to the truck, not missing nuts or bolts, not cracked or damaged, all right? And then we go to the tire, the inside and outer tire wall. Just checking the wall to make sure there's no cuts, bubbles, bulges, or abrasions. And then we go to our tread depth up front. Tread depth up front should be four 30 seconds of tread depth. You check that with the tread depth gauge, all right? And you also check your air pressure. With the air pressure gauge, front tire should read 80 to 100 pounds of pressure. Now also noticing with that front tire, recaps are not allowed on the front tire. On the back tires, they are allowed. Just not on the What's front. Recap? recap tires are basically retreaded tires where they'll actually take the tires and oh, cap okay. them back together. Okay. Yeah. All right. So from there, you drop down to your rim. Rim, no illegal welds. No illegal welds on the rim. Also securely mounted, not missing any nuts or bolts, not cracked or damaged. Lug nuts all present and they're not having, excuse me, they don't have any uh, rust trails leading away from them and no shiny threads. All right, and that indicates looseness. All right, if you see any shiny threads or any rust trails, you might want to check your lug nuts because they're probably loose, all right? All right, and they're all securely mounted, not missing nuts or bolts, not cracked or damaged. Hub oil seal, securely mounted, not missing nuts or bolts, not cracked, damaged, or leaking fluid. Then our valve stem and valve stem cap here, both present, securely mounted, not missing nuts or bolts, not cracked, damaged, or leaking air. Hood flap, securely mounted, not missing nuts or bolts, not cracked or damaged. From that point on, me personally, I like to close the hood at this point. So that way when I get back around to the other side of the truck, I don't have to do it. Because a lot of people tend to forget they're just trying to get to the next step. They end up jumping in the truck. The test will sit just like how you are. And they'll stand there until you jump out and close the hood. They're not gonna get in with you to do the in cab. So me personally, after you finish this section, 
Go ahead and touch your hood, match it down. And whenever you latch that hood down, I want you to make sure that you give it a nice tug to make sure that it is fully latched down. So if you can come over, I want you to go ahead and latch this side down, sir. I'm just gonna take this rubber flap, put it right underneath of the connection. Lift it up. Yeah, lift that all the way up. Yep, and you're gonna put it right up on the other piece there. Okay. Let's see, stop that and drop it down there. Yeah. you can feel it yeah you feel the tension on that yeah once it's locked yeah go ahead and put it all the way down there you go and then okay perfect and then you always tug on it come to the front just give it a little tug just to make sure it's secure because we have had a person close it and it wasn't fully glass down they pulled up and stopped it flew up it's an automatic fail so you can that as being a dangerous driver or whatnot has it and um yeah that can cause an accident of course because once that hood is up you cannot see out of that uh, mirror, uh, window, I'm sorry. Uh, but from that point on, step back to your stairs. Stairs should be free of debris, right? And securely mounted. Now, missing us a boss, not crack the damage. Come back to your exhaust system. Exhaust system should be securely mounted. Excuse me. Uh, not missing us a boss, not CDLs, crack damage or leaking. The reason we say leaks here, because if there was a crack on this exhaust, you'll see the black smoke trails, which is carbon soot. All right, they want to see and want to hear you say that it's not leaking carbon soot trails, all right? And that would indicate a leak. If there was any black smoke trails leading the way, you would be able to know that there is a leak there, all right? Now, you also want to check your frame and also the cross members. Underneath the catwalk is another cross member and the cross member here, they are in the shape and form of a ladder. If we were to take the trail and truck apart and just lift up the frame, it looks like a ladder. It's in a ladder form. All right, and they're all securely mounted, not missing us of bolts, not cracked damage, and no illegal wells on the frame itself. Now, from that point on, I'll check my catwalk as well. It's free of debris, securely mounted, not missing us of bolts, not cracked or damaged. Over here, we have the drive shaft. Drive shaft. And universal U joints on both ends. Drive shaft free of debris. Universal U joints are properly lubricated, both securely mounted. U joints, so shaped like a U. All right, that's the U joints on both ends. Come on up, kind of shaped like a U here. All right, and it's on both sides. All right, they're free of debris, well lubricated, securely mounted. I'm missing out some bolts, not cracked or damaged. Now, this is where it starts to get easy because now all we're doing is pretty much repeating all the parts that we just named up front, but we don't have to give those tedious details. We can just name them and say we check them as we did the front. The only time you really uh, need to go over the details is when you're going over a new part. All right, so we have the four suspension parts once again. Front hanger mount, rear hanger mount. You got your leaf springs, right? And the U-joints sit on the inside. The U-joints, yep, right there. I'm mm -hmm. oh, excuse me, U-bolts, sorry, U-bolts, all right? Those three parts, we check like we did the front. Remember up front is a shock absorber, but back here on this particular truck, it's a torque arm, all right? And that torque arm is a new part, so I have to give those tedious details because it's a new part and I didn't say it up front. So being that it's a new part, I'm gonna say they're securely mounted, not missing nuts or bolts, not cracked or damage. And then from there, go to my brake hose, brake chamber, slack adjuster push rod, brake drum and lining. I'll check that exactly as I did the front. Those are my five brake parts, brake hose, Brake chamber, slack adjust the push rod, brake drum, and brake lining. I checked those exactly like I did the first. Uh, and that's when the points just shift back, all right? And then also we checked the inner and outer tire wall, tread depth and air pressure the same way we did the front. The only difference in the seconds. back. There you go, 230 seconds. Two Remember tires. that by two tires. Make it easy. Two tires, 230 seconds. Recaps are allowed on the back tires. And we also have a dual butted rim, so we check in the middle, make sure it's free of debris, all right? You also have your mud guard here, your mud flap here. You check just like we did the mud flap up front. So you gotta say, rims, lug nuts, valve stem, valve stem cap. We check just like we did the front. The only difference, axle seal. Hub oil seal up front, axle seals are in the back. All right, the axle seal securely mounted. Not messy nuts or bolts, not crack, damage, or leak. All right, from there we go to our frame and deck. Frame, no illegal wells. Deck has no missing wooden planks. They're both securely mounted. Not missing nuts or bolts, not crack, damage. And also our tie downs alongside the trailer. No illegal welds, securely mounted, not missing us the balls, not cracked or damaged. 
Also the reflective DOT tape alongside of my trailer, as well as my side marker lights. All right, alongside my trailer. My side marker lights are proper color, amber to the front, all the way at the end is red to the rear. All right, and those DOT tapes and side marker lights securely mounted, not missing out your bolts, not cracked or damaged. We head back to the third axle where we renamed the parts and say we checking like we did the two previous axles. This is where it gets even easier because we already named the torque arm and axle seals here. So all we got to do is just name them, check them like we did the front. Front rear hangers, leaf spring, u bolts and torque arms. Check like I did the front. Brake holes, brake chamber, slack adjust the push rod, brake drum and line, check as I did the front. Tires, inner and outer tire wall, tread that air pressure, check like I did the front. Rims, lug nuts, valve stem, valve stem cap, and axle seals, check like I did the front. That's it. We get to the final axle. This axle, we say we check this final axle like we did the three previous axles. Would you like me to demonstrate? If they say no, don't demonstrate. You did a hell of a job up front. You didn't miss anything. Don't worry about it. They'll say continue on. But if you did miss something, they're giving you the opportunity to make up for what you missed. Sometimes it's not that you missed saying the actual part is probably one of the details. If you forgot to say securely mounted or no missing nuts or bolts or not cracked or damaged or leaking. They will not give you the part if you, I mean the point if you do not say the entire spiel as far as those three key details. You must say all three. We had a guy go through the entire pre-trip, said it perfectly. He just forgot to say missing nuts and bolts on everything. Did not get one point on that test because of missing that one detail out of the three that he must say. All right, so remember to say securely mounted, not missing nuts and bolts, either not cracked or damaged, or not crack damage and leak. All right, just as long as you say those three parts, you'll be perfectly fine. All right, but from there you go back, mud flat, we check like we did the previous ones up front, DOT reflective tape and lights to the rear, red in color, securely mounted, not missing us or bust, not crack or damage. We get on to the opposite side of the truck and trailer. We just say that we now check this side of my truck and trailer the exact same way that we did the opposite side. Every point that we got on that side now shifts over. Just remember, you got one, two, three, four axles on one side, so it's four on the other. That's eight total axles. And each part is one point. So you multiply that one part by eight. All right, so if you miss one part, that's eight points missed. So make sure you get all the points that you can on the opposite side. So when you come over and shift it and say you uh, check it like you did that side, you get every point that's on that side, all right? And um, you got one part over here that you need to check, your ABS light. ABS light, amber in color, securely mounted, not missing us or boss, not cracked or damaged. We slide up to our landing gear and crank handle. Landing gear in the proper raise and lock position, crank handle in the lock position. Landing gear in the proper raise lock position, crank handle in the lock position. Both parts securely mounted, not missing us or boss, not cracked or damaged. Now we go to the most important part on the outside of the truck. That's gonna be your fifth wheel section. Now in the fifth wheel section, you technically do not have to fully get under the truck and point to the lock and jaw and cane pin. You just wanna name the eight parts to the fifth wheel section. Now they don't wanna hear the term fifth wheel. They wanna hear the proper term, which is skid plate, all right? And that would be this section here, this entire plate here, it will be considered your fifth wheel, but it's also known as well, actually known as the skid plate. That's the proper term for it, but also known as the fifth wheel, all right? So you have your apron. Apron is the frame of the trailer, and that's gonna sit on top of your skid plate. And if you can see in between the skid plate and apron, there's no gap. If there is a gap, you might wanna check that truck and trailer and make sure that it is completely latched, because if there is a gap, it's not completely latched properly, and it can come loose. Right, so you always want to check to make sure there's no gap and you want to make sure it's also well lubricated you see a lot of the grease around it all right properly lubricated all right and those two parts securely mounted not missing nuts or bolts not cracked or damaged and right beneath that you have the hitch release lever all right the hitch release lever that's the unlatch your locking jaw that hitch release sits right beside the locking pin all right the locking pin here and your hitch release here hitch release locking pin both of those parts, securely mounted, not missing us or bolts, not crack damage, there, all right? And that's four parts that I just named. Apron skid plate, hitch release locking pin. We have our platform here, 
held down by the mounting bolts, those six parts, all right? Platform mounting bolts, securely mounted, not missing much of bolts, and crack the damage. And underneath the actual trailer itself, in between the fifth wheel section, once again, you don't have to technically get under here to see it. But for those today who actually want to see it, you can come on under. <laughs> if you want to get down and get dirty, here we go. All right, so that's your locking jaw. Oh, okay. And right behind that is your kingpin. All right, so that locking jaw is secure around that kingpin back there. Kingpin is not bent or broken. And both of those locking jaw and kingpin, both parts, securely mounted, not missing nuts or bolts, not cracked or damaged. All right, and that's your eight parts. Okay, eight, eight parts total. Locking jaw, kingpin, platform, mounting bolts, hitch release, locking pin, apron, skid plate. All right, those are eight parts. Now, once you uh, go through those eight parts, you come to the front end of the trailer. Now, on this particular trailer, we don't have one. But for an extra point, they will give you an extra point if you name the header board. Header board, if you have ever seen any of the flatbed trucks out on the road, you'll normally see like a big metal plate that sits up front of the trailer. That header board is there to protect you from any cargo that may crash through the cab, right? And a couple weeks ago, there was a driver who actually had pipes, steel pipes on the back, didn't have a header board, slammed on brakes, ended up in an accident went straight through him, he's no longer here. So that's what a header board is for, to protect you from any cargo crashing into the cab, which possibly can injure or kill, all right? So always wanna make sure that you get the extra point. You just let them know if I had a header board, I would make sure it's securely mounted, not messy nuts or bolts, not crack the damage and strong enough to withstand cargo crashing into, all right? And from there you go to your glad hands, all right? Your glad hand connections, and airlines, all right? So your glad hand connections and airlines, you wanna feel and listen for any air leaks. Also wanna make sure that they are securely mounted, not missing out some bolts, not cracked or damaged, and or leaking air, all right? And the rubber hoses are not dry rod afraid. We have the electrical uh, connection on the trailer side, securely mounted, not missing out some bolts, not cracked, damaged there. And also the rubber uh, connection is not melted or frayed for the electric, all right? Then we go to the truck side, and this is where we have our couplings. Couplings and airline connections. We're gonna fill and listen on this side to make sure we don't have or hear any leaks. And also make sure they're securely mounted, not missing us or bolts, not crack damage there or leaking, not dry rod or frayed. And the electrical uh, connection on this side, securely mounted, not missing us or bolts, not crack damage or leaking, not melted or frayed here. All right, so from there, go to our fuel tank fuel tank and fuel straps you want to check so both sorry. we want to check both fuel tank and fuel straps fuel straps should have no shininess just like the lug nuts to indicate looseness uh but we also want to make sure that they're both securely mounted not missing our supports not crack damage and not leaking fuel all right we want to check our cap fuel cap to be present all right and inside the cap there is a chain that connects the cap to the tank so you don't lose the cap and a rubber seal inside to prevent leaks. All right, and from there- Do we have to open that cap? No, so now, everything on a truck, you do not actually have to touch. You okay. just point to and explain what you would check. Okay. All right, and then you have your uh, electrical uh, fuel lines here. All right, these electrical fuel lines here are securely mounted, not missing nuts or bolts, not crack damage, and not melted or frayed. All right, so from there, we just go to our door. Door, we wanna open and close, make sure it open and closes properly. Check the top and bottom hinge to the door. Make sure they're securely mounted. Not missing nuts or bolts, not crack damage there. Yeah, definitely want to check the rubber seal around the door. Also check for your emergency equipment, which would be your ABC fire extinguisher. Please do not call it a fire extinguisher. It is a ABC fire extinguisher. And that locking pin right there that just flew out, <laughs> you want to make sure that's in the lock position. All right, and you also want to check to make sure that we are fully charged. That vial is in the green, all right? And that's the way you know that we are fully charged, all right? And also from there, you got three reflective triangles, which are sitting underneath the passenger seat, spare fuses in the glove box, all right? And those are your three emergency equipment that you must name uh, before entering the uh, cab, all right? So from that point on, you got your handrail here, securely mounted, not missing us the bolts, 
not crack the damage there. And from there, you can do your three points of contact to enter the cab with your hand on rail, hand on door, and foot on step. And just go ahead and enter the cab. Now, the same way I entered the cab is the same way I should get out. If I get out this way, go home. You failed. That's an automatic fail. Don't get out that way. You failed. So get in and out the same exact way, all right? So from this point on, <laughs> from this point on, we would normally, yeah, one, if one person want to get on the other side, open that door for me. Go ahead, open that door back open for the lady. Yeah. How do you find it very important? Air break. <clears throat> Yeah, you stand up on the step. You got it? You I'm right? going to record everything. This okay. Good. Yeah, yeah. All right. I appreciate that. I'm sorry. All right. So now that we're inside the, uh, the actual cab, we will usually shut the door, of course. So when we shut the door, we got our mirrors right there. So we want to check out mirrors, make sure they're connected to the bracket and the bracket connect to the door. They're all securely mounted, not missing out some bolts, not cracked or damaged. Also, we sat down in the seat, so we want to check the seat, make sure it's adjusted for you and your height, and also make sure it's securely mounted, not missing nuts or bolts, not crack damage or leaking air. All right, and then from there, check your seat, your seat belt, make sure the seat belt is not cut, torn, afraid, and make sure that it properly fastens and unfastens. All right, and once you do that, you can check your steering wheel, no more than two inch of play, the horn works, we can do our safe start where we turn the key over once, you'll see the dash light up. On top of the dash, there's a, a sign that says wait to start. You got to wait till that light cut out. They all just cut out. Now I can start up my vehicle and I'm going to just name off all my gauges. All right. So for the sake of you guys, I'm going to say it all right here before I start it up so you can hear it. So normally when we start it up, we'll just start naming off our gauges. Old gauge should rise between the levels of 40 and 60. Um, and the water pressure should be between 170 and 200. Fuel, you just name whatever the fuel is, it actually should be over half a tank enough for the test. Battery should be between 12 and 14 in the green, and the air tanks should both be either at 100 to 120 pounds of pressure. All right, and from there, we would then check our left signal that works, right signal that works, high beams that works, and the hazard lights that work, and my headlights that works. Then I will go over to my defrost to turn it to the heat. Turn on the defrost setting, fill up top, fill down bottom. That works, I can cut it off. And then I will go and check my windshield, wipers, and uh, fluid. This one we need to add fluid too, but you would check your windshield wipers and fluid. Make sure that the wind, uh, windshield blades are flush to the windshield. Blades, not dry rod afraid. They're connected to the arm, arm connected to the truck. Securely mounted, not missing, not so boss, not cracked or damaged. Also check your windshield. Make sure there's no illegal stickers or obstructions blocking your vision. Properly sealed, securely mounted, not missing out some balls, not cracked damage there. All right, and from that point, you can then do your air brake test. All right, so I'm actually gonna start it up now, but when you do your air brake test or your tug test, you always wanna make sure that you had a full tank of air at 120 pounds of pressure. If you start lower than 120 pounds, you automatically fail. Air brake test is the number one part of the test that you must get 100% on outside of the fifth wheel section. Those two parts are the most important parts. That's where your truck connects. Fifth wheel is where your truck connects to the trailer. And I, trust me, I drive at night. I seen guys on the, on the yard. They pull out the damn trailer unattached because they didn't check it properly. And I got pictures of it where it just comes off. And that's very dangerous. He's lucky that he didn't get out on the road and that happened. You know, so you always want to check your equipment before pulling out of the yard or whatnot. Um, also, the air brake, you wanna make sure that you have brake power because that's the most important part. If you can't stop a truck, the only way to stop it is to hit something, you know, or we'll go up a hill. Other than that, there's no way to stop One it. question, mm -hmm. uh, before the air brake, if the air was down to 80 something, you we need to up. fill up yeah. first. Okay. Yeah, if your air pressure is below 120, you would definitely wanna fill your air tanks back up and the way to speed that process up is step on the gas, Get your RPMs up to 15, and you'll notice that your air tanks will speed up the process. If you just sit and wait, it may take a couple minutes before they actually fill all the way up. So to speed that process up, just give it a little gas, bring your RPMs up to 15, 
that's the perfect spot and that'll fill you up. So I'm gonna go ahead and start it up. You heard that sound right there? That's the governor cutout. When you hear that, you know you're at 120. That's a full tank. Now perform an air brake test. Air brake test, most important part. There's three key things that we must do to perform this air brake test. This is the part that normal people usually fail. Whenever they fail a test, it's usually the air brake test, and they forget to do one of the three key things that I'm about to do. First thing, must remember, turn the engine off. That's number one. All right. Some people actually do their air brake test with the engine on. They won't lose air pressure because the engine's running mm -hmm. and it's constantly building air pressure. So got to turn it off. Second, turn the key back to the on position so that we have power to the truck. Because when I go to fan down below 60, I need my warning lights and buzzers to come on. They're not going to engage if we don't have power to the truck. All right. So that's another thing. So that second, first key off, second key on. My third and final thing I must do Release both brakes. Release my brakes. If you don't, remember to release the brakes when you go to fan down below 40 pounds of pressure. Those valves are not going to pop out. That's an automatic fail. And if you go and reach for them to pop out, and they actually pop out, they count that as you touch it. Don't reach. Keep your hands here and just watch them. Just fan down. You don't even have to look at the gauge and watch it go down to 40 or below. You just watch these two valves and wait till they pop out. So I'm gonna actually go ahead and do it now. So you will tell the tester, I'm now gonna perform my air brake test. My air brake test consists of me holding down my service pedal for one minute within the one minute. Shouldn't lose more than four pounds of pressure. Do you mind please timing me? And they'll say, yes, sir or ma'am, are you ready? And you just apply to say yes. They'll say, all right, start now. Once they say start, you just hold it down. Once they say your minute is now up, you can release. <laughs> and you would just say, I did not lose more than four pounds of pressure within that one minute. Now I'm gonna continue to fan down my brakes till we hit 60 pounds of pressure and that's when my warning lights and buzzers should engage on my air tank valves. So my warning lights and buzzers just engaged. Red lights came on, you can clearly hear the buzzers. Now I'm gonna tell them they properly work. And now I'm gonna continue to fan down to approximately 40 pounds of pressure where my two yellow and red truck and trailer valves should pop out and engage. Always explain to them what you're gonna do before you do it. Don't touch that pedal until you are ready to start after you explain what you're gonna do first. So now I'm just watch the valves. They both popped out. They properly work. That concludes my air brake test. That's 100% I passed. So now I must perform my tug test. Tug test is where I rebuild my air pressure back to 120 and I'm just gonna release one of the brakes, drop down to a lower gear and slightly tap on the gas to make sure the other brake that is still in gear. Which the lower oh, gear? Yeah, I'll drop down to a lower gear. Once again, I'm gonna build my air pressure back up and put it up to 15 RPMs. That's gonna speed up my process. You see that my tanks are starting to move a little faster. If I stop here, you see they stop take very very long to get back up you see they're barely moving when i give it a little gas 15 you see they're starting to move a little faster so it may take about a minute for them to fill back up versus three to five minutes so coming up on 60 pounds we got another 60 to go until we fill the tanks all the way back to a full tank Drive four, three, two, one. Leave it at one. Tap on the gas. The brake holds. 
pull that one out, push in the next one. It holds. That concludes my tongue test. In cavern test, fully completed. Only thing I have to ask the instructor to do is to check my outside light indicators. And I just asked them, can you perform the buddy system with me? Check my outside light indicators. And the day of your test, they'll let you know. Sometimes they'll say, don't worry about it. You got enough points. You're good. All right. Prepare yourself to grab the wheel chalk and pull up to the star position to perform your skills test, which would be your straight back offset and parallel park. Uh, sometimes they may actually get out and they'll signal you left, right, signal, high beams, headlights, uh, hazard lights, brake lights, reverse lights. They'll check it off. All right. Um, but other than that, that's pretty much it. That's the full pre-trip. Once again, it probably will take you about 20, 25 minutes at the most once you get fluid with it. Um, and once you go through it, if you actually was to miss something and you still have maybe 15 minutes left over, they'll actually let you get back out and find what you missed. And they may take you to the section that you possibly missed something and they may say, go back over this section again. I want to hear it again. And they're trying to help you out, you know, to get you some extra time to go back over. So just take, take a deep breath, take your time, go over everything and make sure you get the details for every part all over again. And you should be able to pick up on what you missed. All right. Any questions? Good. Nope. All right, this concludes the pre-trip for the day. First classes.